financial services industry is facing a series of major challenges with increased cost pressures, regulatory requirements and ever more sophisticated security threats while at the same time exploring transformative technologies. This has led to companies across the sector to really rethink their business models. Companies are trying to figure out how to adopt new technologies and evolve their businesses to address change in the financial industry. Well, to find out more about this, I'm delighted to say that we are joined in the studio by Tim Gokey. Tim is President and CEO at Broadridge Financial Solutions. Tim, welcome to Cybos TV. Thank you very much. Pleasure so to be Tim, here. Tim, to get straight into it, Cybos is, of course, renowned as the premier event for firms globally. So what are the market challenges that your customers are telling you about the international markets currently? And, and what is Broadridge's strategy to expand and serve its customers globally? Yes, absolutely. And you know, I think you, you hit on some of it in your introduction, because when you look at the major trends that are facing the financial services industry, whether that is the commoditization of asset management, the digitization of capital markets, uh, new regulatory challenges, the rise of fintechs, all of those things are causing incumbents across financial services to really have to rethink their business models. And, and a key part of that is how do they use new technology to adapt? And yet they have such a broad application portfolio of, of different things they need to do to put all of that in new technology is a huge challenge. And what we do is provide industry solutions for critical functions but that are less differentiating so that companies can, can share those. And uh, that is something that's been a big trend in North America for a long time is really coming to Europe and Asia, particularly as those markets, you know, there was a lot of market change mm. and a lot of market unification. And also a lot of the regulatory change globally is now being led out of the EU where maybe it wasn't in the past. And so uh, those trends are all causing us to really look at how do we invest in Europe and Asia. It's the fastest part of a growing part of our business, uh, more than doubled over the last five years. Uh, we've recently been able to recruit a gentleman, Samir Pandiri, who, who ran all of global custody for Bank of New York, uh, which is, you know, that business itself was bigger than all of Broadridge. <laughs> and I think you know, that shows sort of the scope of, of what we think is the opportunity yeah. to serve Europe and Asia. And at the same time, we're hearing more about the power of networks and the shift towards mutualization. I'd like to get your take on those subjects yep. and also what, what you think is, is driving these trends because you're in the position to see this. Yeah. Well, and I'll start with mutualization, because mutualization is really uh, if, if I need to do it, and you need to do it, and Johnny needs to do it, if we all invest in that separately, you know, that's a lot of, of really wasted effort. Cool. And so, can we create a common technology platform that can serve all of us? And then you are mutualizing the technology cost, in many cases the operations cost, the security cost, the cost of innovation, the cost of regulatory change. And all those things, by sharing that cost, that leads more to invest in the things that truly make us different and, and, and we can invest. So that's, that's mutualization. Network value then comes on top of that, which is now if we have several of us running on the same technology platform, how can we leverage that, especially the data from that, mm -hmm. to uh, help all of, our, all, of, all of us with our business model? And uh, a great example of that is, is fixed income. Uh, so, uh, in the US, there's a large proportion of the market is on Broadridge's fixed income technology platform. And one of the challenges in fixed income is uh, the liquidity in the market has gone down quite a bit over the last 10 years as the market has moved from, from um, uh, a dealer market to an agency market. So we're using the data in our platform to help clients locate counterparties through AI, initially just with their own data, but you know maybe eventually uh, across. But how do we leverage those kinds of things that will help everyone uh, be more successful, not just on the cost side, but also in growing revenue. So how and where are Broadridge currently investing in, in emerging technology? Yeah, you will hear us talk incessantly about what we call the ABCDs, AI, blockchain, cloud, and digital. And so we're investing in all of those things. I think the core underneath all of that is the whole revolution that everyone's going through to uh, change their core architectures to be much more driven by APIs and microservices. And so uh, that's something that we are, uh, we're doing and we're, we're, you know, in the future, you know, AI will be part of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, AI is really all about the data and it's about openness to data, so that hence the API microservices approach, but also it's, it's the more use cases you see, the better learning you can have. So a cross industry solution can actually have better AI than any individual uh, person. In blockchain, is really about 
who can bring the network, because unless you have a lot of people participating, it doesn't make sense. And uh, there are certain areas like proxy and fixed income and some other ones where we have a number of people on our platform already, so we can bring that. Uh, cloud, I think you know, every large provider has a major cloud effort on. And they have, again, such a wide application portfolio. If in certain areas we can just take that and, and do that for them, and, and that's what we're doing. Uh, and then digital, we do a lot of communications. You know, in the future, all of it is going to be you know, on our phone. And how do we take all that paper and really turn it into an experience that enhances the experience and allows people to take action? Given everything that, that you're doing and what you're planning to do, how do you think this, these technologies are going to propel you and your clients' growth when we, when we go forward? Because so much is happening. We know technology is never static. Yep. What is going on here? <laughs> you know, I think there are, uh, there are uh, different arenas where there's going to be significant change. And I can think of uh, six different ones that we're working on where we're building you know, really you know, cool new stuff, uh, quote unquote. But just a couple of examples. I think uh, uh, one, for instance, is in, so we do a lot of, sort of really behind the scenes, uh, global post-trade technology. Mm. Uh, and you know, the past, those platforms have all been sort of by asset class, by region. Uh, that led to a very complex operating model for, uh, for large global institutions with different technology teams, different operations teams, different supervision. And where that is always evolving is to a single global multi-asset class platform. And we are working with a number of leading players on that, and that will really help them simplify and improve their operations. Uh, another example, uh, right now there's significant, I'll probably talk about this you know, uh, 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 throughout, but there's an, a significant regulatory change in Europe around uh, the shareholder rights directive. Yeah. And uh, that will give shareholders more access to corporate governance, it will give public companies more access to their shareholders, but imposes significant responsibilities on custodians and wealth managers to meet those needs. Uh, we're building a, a new platform for the industry uh, in digital ledger technology that will allow public companies to access those records that they need and really make uh, it much easier for custodians and wealth managers to meet the mandates that they have under the regulation. Mm. Tim, you touched on it earlier how collaboration is such a key word in the industry at the moment. Can you talk us through this, this power of partnership approach? Perhaps share a couple of examples of how Broadridge is helping clients leverage these innovative technologies. Yeah, you know, when you are uh, creating this kind of uh, shared application that I talked about that is mutualized, it is by definition collaborative amongst all the clients that are on it. And so when we think about how we drive uh, the roadmap for the future of the application and, and where we collectively want to take, uh, take the product, you know, we collaborate with all of our clients to, uh, to map that out. Uh, the other place is really in the inception. We often will partner in a deep way with uh, a couple of clients to really help, help it get started and, and work together on the IP. We're working with, for instance, the, the largest provider of fixed income globally to take eight different applications that they have uh, around the world you know, into one global platform for them. And that is the kind of thing that then uh, allows us to serve many others. Uh, similarly, we're working with another very large tier one institution on, on asset servicing, which we may touch on again in a couple of minutes. We certainly again, will, yeah. Where they have <laughs> uh, eight different applications, or I think in their case, 10 different applications, you know, serving different businesses, different geographies, and working to create one single global solution for them that will, uh, you know, we think it's not only solve their pain point, but the pain for a lot of other people as well. I mean, look, this, this is head, head spinning stuff, but I am keeping pace with you on this, so don't worry about it. But I mean, look, Broadridge, it, it is investing a great deal in its asset servicing solution. We're now seeing it running live on AWS, so congratulations on that. But yep. look, what can you tell us about the combined efforts of Broadridge working with AWCs? And you talked about these ABCs, so come on, dive in, give us an example of that collaboration. Well, I think the the, uh, we have, as do many, uh, have you know, a full-on cloud program. We have 80 different teams working right now refactoring applications uh, to go to AWS. And, uh, and almost every major institution has some sort of major cloud initiative. But I think the real thing is, is not just the infrastructure and uh, sort of can I run it uh, uh, better, cheaper. There is a, there's a whole tool set uh, around uh, AWS that makes developers much more productive and that enables new capabilities. And so it's a whole environment that is, is not just infrastructure, it's also software. And I think that is 
uh, getting our developer community really excited, mm. and I think it will make us more productive in meeting important client needs in the future. Mm. Okay, well, head spinning stuff, like indeed, I said. Indeed, indeed, <laughs> Tim, we'd love to speak to you more, but we must release you back into Cybus 2019. There's still plenty more to see and do. That's Tim Goki, President and CEO of Broadridge Financial Solutions. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Cybus TV. Thank you Great. so much. It's been Thank really you. informative. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>